All right, we're sitting here with Michael Charles, and uh, the last time we we uh, spoke with Michael was uh, God last year uh, in the fall, I think it was, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm guessing that. Too. Yeah, somewhere yeah. around there. And uh, how you been since uh, the last time we saw you? Uh, I've been great. Uh, we're all doing good. We've just been uh, flat out on on the road, traveling and um, doing our thing. Well, we were talking before we uh, did this, and you said that you had a big show big shows all summer long last year where did you guys go to did you, guys, you went to canada you said and uh well this winter actually yeah, this winter the start of this year so uh from january to now we haven't stopped it's been two months and uh we went to canada twice went into like um calgary and edmonton and then we went into vancouver and then we were out west we did a lot of places out west a number of places and it's just been it's just been full on it's been great it's good to be busy and uh, what, what do you got in, uh, in store for this year, though? You got everything coming up? Uh, we're actually going to Australia within the month. Wow, that's going to be cool. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Yeah. And uh, we're doing that, so... Have you been there before? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Good question. I think so. Yes, I know yeah. so. <laughs> it was a joke, Michael. <laughs> Don't go there as often as I'd like to, but right. yeah. So it'd be good to be back home, right? It'd be good to be back home. Right. Yeah. And... Uh, the uh, whole time that uh, you were in Canada, how was the how was the vibe in Canada? How's the music scene in Canada? Well, I've actually got a really good um, fan base in Canada, so yeah. we always have good shows, and uh, it's just it's always a fun time, right? And uh, you can't beat that with the stick. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been in, I've been to Canada probably once, and I went probably to Niagara Falls, and that was about it, though. I never really <laughs> went any further into Canada. Well, that's not too. Well, far I went. Gam- I went gambling. I mean, I don't know if you want to count that. It was still by Niagara Falls. I mean... We'll, we'll count that. All right, cool. If you cross the border, we have to count it. Right. Well, now you need a passport to get in there now. Yes, before you, you, didn't need, you didn't need it before. Now you do. Well, yeah. yeah. No passport, no entry. Yeah. So the uh, the whole... Any new music since the last time we spoke? Um, I'm actually uh, working in the studio when I get a chance these days and, and okay. uh, laying down some, some new tracks. But... Um, you know, I, I, I like to bring out an album every year or, or within the two years, so um, we're getting close to that, so something's got to come out soon. Yeah, well, and then uh, when uh, the new album comes out, what type of what type of music are you going to... I mean, what sort of uh, new music is going to be involved with this new CD? Uh, this CD, I'm going back to uh, what, uh, what... Is it I'm more normally, bluesy? Yeah, it's going to be all yeah. back, back to what I do. I mean, like the last one, I did that... Um, that um, CD with Majesty, which was right. hip hop, rock, and hip-hop blues, in it, yeah. and uh, it was it was fun. It was a good thing, right. and uh, it's it's nice to do something new, fresh. But it's nice to go back to what you normally do too. I didn't. I, didn't, I asked. I think I asked you this question the last time you were around, though. What was the vibe on like the hip hop slash the blues when when Majesty and you were playing up on stage? I mean, what kind of reactions were you getting from people? You know, on on. Uh, I'd say you know ninety percent of the time was always a great reaction from mm-hmm. people, but you know when you when you try and innovate something, so to speak, you, right. you always get a little bit of criticism. And every now and then, it'd be a person would say, "Oh, great show," but you know, let, get rid of that hip hop. But you know, it was it was like very it was the odd the oddball every now right. and then. So that's why I continued on for as long as it did. And um, it, but you know, you can never please everybody. It doesn't matter what you right. do. Right. So I, I kind of look at those few people like that, which is I can count them on one hand. Yeah, and it's 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 no big deal. Now, any changes within the group at all, or everybody's still the same? No problems. Uh, no. We're all here. Yeah, yeah. we still got uh, Dave back there on the drums, and we still got Brenda on background vocals. We still got Steve over there helping he's, you out. Yeah, right he's now. interning right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on bass. Right. Yeah. So we're all um, we're all the same guys still. And uh, what's what's new for Michael Charles? What, what's going to be next on the horizon? Oh, new. Anything um, new? You know, new. Always new places. Yeah. Um, I I do what I do. I just I, I like going out there doing my shows, and it's nice. Like well, I think this is what the fourth time back here, I believe. Yeah, I'm I believe, losing yeah. track now. Four, so yeah, we're losing track it's now. It's nice to to be asked back so many times. So that's it's like a, it's like a tradition now. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, every it's, time you're in Cleveland, you come you, you come see us. Were we supposed to be here today? Or was, did we just come automatically? I don't know. I think it's... Uh, it's just automatically. Was it, yeah. <laughs> was it on the schedule? I think it was. I oh, believe okay. it was. But well, it doesn't matter. Well, I, mean, anyway, I always right? enjoy when you come in. So it doesn't really matter. I just drive here automatically. Yeah, exactly. Throw it in cruise control and let's go. 
<laughs> That's what happened. Right. So a lot of long hours coming up for uh, Michael, at, you know, this year with, yeah. the, with a schedule or? Always a lot of long hours. Yeah. Always, you know, um, like I say, it's always, like you say, what, what's what's new on the horizon. Mm-hmm. What's new is always going to a new place. Right. And um conquering a new audience and things like that that's that's like the never-ending story it just doesn't end there's always a new place right there's always a new audience and uh you just keep doing what you do and, and try to do it best way you can you have to i mean in your music also has to involve revolve too and involved and, and, and move forward and everything so uh, with with your music you know the the way it was and then going back to your roots now are you kind of happy you're going back to your roots where you, where you used to be, or are you still going to throw that element of hip hop in there every now and again? No, I'm, I'm done with the hip hop thing. I oh, mean, yeah. that's uh, we we did that stint. I mean, we when I started working with Majesty it was basically going to be just a little EP. Okay, and then we kind of got so involved with it, it ended up being a whole album, as you know. Right. And then when I took it on the road, the reaction was really good so i believe he was on the road with us what three years i guess three four years close to yeah and um we did that it's done yep um was a lot of fun it was all good but and that's what keeps it like like you say go back to what i normally do is new again because we took a kind of kind of a break from it a little bit and that did that little hip hop thing in there right which was was all great but it's it's always nice to go back home Right, it, yeah, you have to because if you don't, then people are going to call you a sellout and all this other stuff. And you know, you're a blues artist. Why are you, you know, messing with it? And yeah, exactly, don't, you know, yeah, don't change exactly. it. Yeah, right, exactly. Right. But it's nice to do new things. It's nice to to, to try things. That, that that's part of growing. That's right. part of your music evolves too. So you're at Fat Fish Blue today. Yes. Uh, eight o'clock. I believe. Eight o'clock tonight. Yeah. yeah. And uh, doors open what seven? Uh, I, believe? I believe they're open about seven. Yeah. Something like that. It's though. pretty early. Um, this is uh, Fat Fish Blue. Always brings you back every year. Yeah, that kind of um, it's like a tradition again. Like a tradition too. Right, yeah. Right. It's like well, it's it's nice. Like I said, it's nice to be ass back, right. and um, it's, it's it's a nice feeling. I mean, when you don't get return mm-hmm. gigs, um, you've got to think that out and see why. But uh, I've been lucky that doesn't happen. What was the funnest place you played so far since Ooh. last time we we, we uh, spoke? Funnest place. Yeah, that's a hard one. What would Brenda? you say, Dave? What do you think, Brenda? Any funnest place? It's hard. Huh? They're all I'd fun. Say Fargo, They're all North fun. North Dakota. Where? Really? Yeah. North Dakota. That was fun. Where was that? Fargo, North Dakota. Oh, Fargo Blues Festival. Yeah, yes. the Winter Blues Festival. That was a nice gig. Yeah, that was a really nice. How gig. about you, Dave? What do you think? What's what's the favorite your favorite place to play so far? Um. I didn't mind playing in Vancouver. Vancouver? Vancouver's a nice town. You been there? Uh, no. Oh, you, you just said, went. That's right. Niagara I went to Falls, Niagara Falls yeah. and that was it, though. <laughs> Vancouver's nice. Uh, a little, little hairy to get there, but it's nice. Yeah. Once you get there, it's nice. Once the roads open up again. If you had a place, any place in the world that you'd rather play, where, where would it be and why? Any place any in the Any place world? in the world. If you had an opportunity to play any place in the world, where would it be and why? Ooh. You've got me on that one. Really? Yeah, I've never thought. I of asked. It. I asked every band that walks I've through the never... door, where would they rather, where would they play? And there was one band. It was really funny. I'll tell you the story. There was a local band here in Cleveland. I asked them. I said, "Where do you? Where would you want to play at?" And they go, "Peabody's." And I go, <laughs> "Peabody's." I said, "Anywhere in the world you want to play Peabody's?" Yeah. I'm like, "What about Madison Square Garden? You know, the Opera House in Sydney? Uh, anywhere? Where, where would you want to play?" And he goes. Peabody's. It's a local dive here in Cleveland. Come on. <laughs> well, we support the local dive. That's I guess. Good. I guess. But uh, for me to answer that question would be, I think, um, I, I just like play as long as the audience is there for you, and and you know the venue is just a venue when you, right. when you really think about it. You know, whether it's Madison Square Garden, yeah, it's a big venue, a lot right. of people there, or you know, any big venue. You know, go, but it's 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 the atmosphere that you create with your audience. Right. So the venue, once you start playing and all that gels, right? Right. The venue's irrelevant. Well, what about you, Brenda? What, do you, what is there a special place that you would like to play? Um, country, but I don't know which venue it would be. But okay. Over what country? In Europe. In Europe? Mm-hmm. Any probably anywhere in Europe, well, right? Europe's a whole area. What country? I know. Yeah. What country? In Europe. Yeah. <laughs> Italy, Germany. All right, London. Yeah, Italy would be number one. Italy? Yeah. I, I mean, 
if I had my opportunity, I'm not an artist or anything like that, but if I had a place that I want to call home, it'd probably, you know, be overseas somewhere too. Um, I would say London. That's probably where I want to go, you know, and, and open up a internet radio station in London or something like that, because just the atmosphere, just, you know, being there or, you know, Great Britain, somewhere around there, because I think that's, that's really some, some, you know, here in the United States, there's a lot of places I probably would want to go, but here, if I want to, if I if I took the MSC brand and I wanted to move it, it'd probably be like somewhere in Great Britain or probably London or something like that. I mean, it's, I'd never been there, and that's something I have always wanted to do is go somewhere overseas like that. So and if you've never been there, how do you know if you'd like it? Because of all the stories I've heard from people, all the the pictures and the videos that I saw from different people, I just want to go there. Yeah. You know, it it just it's probably something. It would probably be like a good physical, I guess release or rush just to go see you know these different places you know so so like, it's not it's not cold enough in cleveland for you it's too cold in cleveland sometimes yeah, i'm into viewing you see uh, well, see what's happened right 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 well see that's fine <laughs> i've had it done to me before though but i can flip it though so what's next <laughs> <laughs> what's next <laughs> fat fish blue this uh that's tonight so Tonight at 8 o'clock, doors open up at 7. Uh, all the information is on our website at morningshowcentral.com. And then um, what else? Uh, uh, what's next after Fat Fish Blue? Where are you heading next after well, that? Like I said, we're going to um, – we, we go back into the studio and do some rehearsing and change the show around a little okay. bit and get ready for Australia. Nice, nice. And what are you guys going to play for us tonight or today? Uh, I'm going to do a um, one of my most um, – Requested songs, which okay. is a song called MC Shuffle. Okay. And uh, that's what we're going to do for right. you today. Appreciate it. Thank you. You got it. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Charles. For some place to stay Cars about to overheat And I need something to eat I play the blues in a rock and roll band But the people they don't understand I got my guitar in the back seat So I don't care if I overheat Singing the yeah. MC Shuffle with a guitar in my hand, the MC Shuffle, guitar in my hand, yeah, I found myself a country town, where there's not many people around, I sold my car, I don't need much money, it's kind of slow here to get around All you see is a memory Staring at you up that main street So all I do is play my guitar And I don't care if I don't get too far I'm singing the MC Shuffle With a guitar in my hand The MC Shuffle in my hands Oh I found myself a country town Where there's not many people around I sold my car, I don't need much money It's kind of slow here to get around All you see is a memory It's staring at you up that main street So all I do is 
play this guitar And I don't care if I don't get too far I'm singing the MC Shuffle With a guitar in my hand The MC Shuffle Guitar The MC Shuffle. That's crazy. <laughs> I had to go back there because I had to do like double duty. Okay. Yeah, so it worked out really good though. But how did, how long did it take for that song to, you know, you guys to come up with that song and how long did it take to get in, uh, um, it, you know, to play well, it? This particular song, right. I actually wrote this song um, way, way back in, uh, I believe it was 1985. Really? I wrote this song. And I played it live um, off and on for many years. And then I finally recorded it and put it on an album back in 1999. Really? So kind of one of those songs that floated around. And at, at first I just thought it was a good jam song. And then people were saying, oh, man, I love that song. So I ended up recording it. And A lot of artists, a lot of artists, they have like a shoebox full of like different songs that they never, ever did. Do you, is that something that you like with you? I don't keep a shoebox, but it's all in. If you want to keep my brain, a shoebox, you know, mm, okay. it's, it, it just sits in my brain. I, I'll get an idea. But you don't write them down, though. I don't really write a lot of stuff down. I'll, I'll just keep it. Are you um, afraid that you're gonna like maybe forget it or something? And you know, no, because I, I'll, I'll write in so many weird places, you know, okay. I, and I just haven't always got pen and paper, and it just kind of stays with me. Um, these days, I'll, I'll jot something down in my phone right. really quick sometimes, but. Um, it just kind of sits around, and, and sometimes it'll, it'll sit, it'll float in my head, it'll just float around for two, three, maybe five years before I'll do something with it. I'm mm. um, thinking, ah, hey, it's okay, it's not too good, and then I'll lay it down, and still don't think it's too good until somebody says, "Man, I like that recording," and then I'll <laughs> use it. You know, so right. basically, um, you get very close to right. your stuff, so you, you kind of you, you're your worst critic. If there's anybody that you like, like wanted to work with. In particular, like an art, another artist or whatever, or maybe you want to do some collaboration with, who would it be? Ooh, I would love to collaborate with uh, Carlos Santana. Okay. Um, Why is that? Um, I, I can relate to a lot of his playing. I can relate to the, what he's... It's really a weird thing because when I hear that guy play, I actually can picture myself doing it. Okay. I'm not saying I can do it, but I can picture myself. It, it must come from somewhere within where he's where he's finding that and I kind of feel it and I, I, I would love to sit down and uh, just pick his brain a little bit huh? and uh, yeah. yeah I think pick yeah pick the brain maybe but more just sit down and and exchange guitar licks yeah would be, would right. be uh, better than picking a brain right exactly so if okay since you know you said Carlos Santana I mean if what about you Brenda who, who would be the, the artist of your choice who would, who would it be and why Oh boy, I'd have to think about that. Really? She's giving us a lot of hard questions today, but well, they're see, good I, questions. So see, I, well, I did my homework last. They're time. good questions. What about you? Oh, I would have to uh, sit down with my Michael favorite. Charles, right? No, I'd actually have to sit down with uh, my favorite guy, uh, my favorite drummer, Neil Peart. Okay, okay. And why is that though? Oh, just uh, some of, some of the ideas that he has. Listen to some of their songs because I know the way that they write. Uh, they said that they always give Neil the, the basic laydown and let him figure out a drum track after they've already written the, the actual kick of the song. It just what what makes him take to change up so many times. Yeah. Well, I mean that's I mean a lot of lot of there's a lot of like artists when I when I talk to them and I ask myself if there's someone that you wanted to collaborate. There's always some sort of you know. Well, they're my favorite. I, when I was growing up as a kid, I used to listen to them, and I've always wanted to do something with them, or whatever the case. But the, I, I think if there was, if, like, if we're going back into radio or whatever, if there's someone I really, really wanted to work with. Like, if I had the opportunity to really sit next to another uh, famous radio guy, it would probably be Howard Stern. Yeah, uh, you know, and the reason why I, I can see that, and the reason why is because it's it's not because he's a shock jock, and and everybody thinks he's a no, 
the, di- the guy does phenomenal interviews. If you ever sat down and listened to him, he knows how to throw the curveball into an interview, but then bring that curveball and bring it right back. And well, then I, I, I find re- him very right. clever. Right, right. That's the, I think that's a good word for him, very clever. Right. I mean, he's, uh, he's got it down. Yeah, he does. And, and, and that he's one of my idols, you know, so... Uh, if there was anything that you would want to do with your music, like to like maybe change it up a little bit, what would you do with your music right now? I mean, how would you change it up to make it something something a little different? If you if you if you had ideas right now, well, that that that's a really good question because for me and the guys in the band will right. tell you that you know I, I can record a song today and and get it released and it's on an album and right. then by the time we actually take it out on the road and do it live I, I'm driving these guys nuts by changing it again Right. so I'm, I'm never really happy with leaving things alone so well let's record it now let's leave it like that I will constantly keep changing things Right. so to the answer to your question is that's that's just me anyway Right. You know? now is the, there's probably a lot of input within, within the band right now um, it, like let's say Brenda does she come to you and say well, I like to you know maybe you put this in there and you know Dave says like, no how about we change the drums up this way or whatever the case is there a lot of input within the band or um, is it basically you know no i want to do it this way and you know that's it it used to be more this is what i want right. um after after the experience doing the connected album we got okay. kind of involved especially david inc has been hip-hop a lot of beats and, mm-hmm. and uh he would come up with with certain beats and then we would discuss it together and and take out and put in things that and form that base right you know that that basic beat right then i would build things on top of that so from that we've kind of developed a, a relationship with with involving him more in the studio as a drummer right which i never used to do um brenda's pretty much uh brenda can you do this for me can you yeah. do that for me i get me? the pleasure of michael at least um, asking me what do i think and i get to say i will <laughs> ask i'll always ask i'll always ask and even steve and say yeah. you know what do you think blah blah though uh, it always ends up being what i want anyway but i will always ask that you know I, yeah. and then there's always there's always those little things and you go oh wow i i, I didn't i couldn't i wouldn't have thought of that and you keep it, of course. There, like I said, there's a lot of bands out there and a lot of groups that, you know, that do this type of things. And, like, the music itself, I mean, as far as, like, royalties go and stuff like that for the music, it's all Michael Charles, though. Yeah, basically. Right, yeah. Basically. So, but if they put their little collaborations into it and so on and so forth, how do, out, of, out of the band itself, I mean, what do you, how do you guys feel about, you know, uh, you putting your, your, your two cents into the, into the song – how does that relate to you in album sales? It well, doesn't. It doesn't because you know it, it, it. Basically, the the industry doesn't. Um, I always, always, always fascinated by the that industry doesn't. Will not. I mean, how can you say you, you can't claim something that's already been done? Right. If you come up with a with a beat, it's it's beats have been around forever. Right. Um, you, you can vary it. You right. can slow it down, speed it up add an extra kick drum in there or right but how can you claim something that's not yours originally anyway right a song is basically you get paid for the lyrics right and 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 the music does does any of the band here uh put the lyrics in for the song or no it's all me it's all you basically okay and 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 i I don't say not to it's just it it hasn't arised it's never come up where Hey, Brenda, well, give me a verse. Yeah, right. one of the good yeah. things about uh, with Michael for me as a vocalist is that he does give me the flexibility to do ad vocally or right. ad lib vocally, right. you know, where necessary. And it makes if he sense. doesn't like right. it, he'll just say, oh, no, exactly. I'll take that it, out. It, it, it makes total sense <laughs> like that, too, because when you look at some of the artists that are out there currently right now, I mean, you got like the drummer throwing in a verse and. You know, you got the get another guitarist throwing in a verse, and then you got the lead singer throwing in a, you know, a verse or whatever. And then they come up with this this song. Um, prime example is, you know, their uh, oh God what was it? Aerosmith. Oh. They always they they all work together on all the songs. They verses and this and that and the other, and then 
this person's yelling at this person, that person's yelling at this person. Well, you know, they all so. collaborate a song. Right. And uh, see, if, if we go back further to, you know, a couple of genius songwriters, which is Lennon and McCartney. Right. Okay, now they were both such good songwriters, they just formed a partnership. So it really didn't matter who wrote the song. We all know now, you know, it all comes out in the wash, who wrote Let It Be and who wrote, you right. know... You the know, Abbey, Abbey Road. Yeah, 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 yeah you know right, what I'm saying? Right. So... Basically, but they would share those royalties because they would come up with such good songs individually, but they would work together. So they said, ah, oh, it doesn't matter who wrote it. Right. You know. What do you think about digital media right now? Is it hurting you right now or is it actually helping you? Like with um, iTunes and all those Napster and all those other places out there where you can get your get music. If you would have asked me that question probably three years ago, two years ago, I would have said it's hurting me. Right now, it's uh, it's a completely different answer. It's actually in my favor. You like it? It it's great because um, with a little bit of common sense and a little bit of uh, push and a very minimal skeleton staff, right. you can conquer the world with it. Well, you can get out there, and I'm getting sales all over the world without being there, which is great. Well, there, there's the there's an artist, you know, Bon Jovi is uh, he he came out publicly and said that iTunes is hurting his business. You know, um, it's actually physically hurting his his sales and music because people nowadays will just go online, will download the music, pay the ninety nine cents for it, and they they don't have the physical CD in their hand. And you know what? I'm an old school guy. I kind of have to agree with, you know, Bon Jovi a little bit because the the thing is is that when I get music, I want the physical copy of the CD. Well, so do I. Right. I like reading the credits. Exactly. I like, I like looking, looking at, at all the artwork. Who yeah. who's who's drumming on it? Who's right. playing guitar? Special and thanks. Is there in who's there? Who's the background vocal? I like reading all that right. too. But I, in my case, um, I'm still selling more physical CDs. Okay. But and, it, that, and, but that's that works. Part, and that's part of the of the of the uh, the media, right? Um, selling it over the net. I mean, right. dis- distribution is all over the net. Right. People just order a CD and it gets sent right to their house. I mean, if you go into Best Buy and all that, their their CD section is so small now, right? Because nobody can be bothered flicking through the shelves anymore. They just go online. Oh yeah, there it is. I want that, and I order it. Or they can get it right on their their iPhone or their. You can get yeah, yeah if you want to download. See, I personally, I'm like you. It's still I, I like buying a whole physical CD. So I put it in my iPod later after I've bought it. Uh, yeah, and then I put the CD away. Exactly. It gets played once. Exactly. It doesn't even get played. It yeah, because gets, you ripped it. You just rip it. Right. right? Exactly. So, yeah. You're not really playing exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So I mean, it, it, I like the physical aspect of having a CD in my hand, so I can sit back, throw the CD in the CD player. Listen to the music and just flip through the the album cover. Exactly, and uh, inst- I used to, you know, I used to buy your vinyl albums and, and put I, them on. I got tons of them. Yeah, you put them on and you'd be reading while it's playing. You'd right. be reading all your credits and everything. Now, while you're ripping, you read your credits. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> so it's the same thing, you know. Nowadays, the kids what they, what they do is they just go, they they buy the uh, they buy the whole entire CD online, all digital and everything, and they download it to their computer or whatever. And then I go, oh, I want the album art for what? What do you want the album art for? If you're then buy the CD, then if you want the album art, well, you know what they it's want. A picture on the screen. Well, that's what they want. They want right. on the iPod. They want to see the yeah. cover of the album to see, right. you know, um, not that it says much anyway. Right. You can flip it. Right. It has a picture <laughs> of the group or the or the person on it, and the or name the of the flower, band. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> or the dog. <laughs> right. Exactly. So I mean. Why? Why bother even getting getting that? It's just it's just it completes instead of seeing a, a little I guess note icon I guess I anyway. guess. <laughs> I mean, I have an iPod and I, I don't have that much music in it. Really? No, I don't. Oh, my, I, mine's got, all mine's all CD. I think I got three of them. They're all full. Are they really? <laughs> wow. Yeah. I I have one. But we do a lot of driving. So yeah, you it, have to. It's it's yeah. it's. Plug it in, put it on random, and then off you go. It's great, like on a Saturday or mm-hmm. Sunday. You're at home, and you open up the windows in your house. You're sitting on your couch, and you throw in the music, and then you wake up your neighbors next door. You know, crank it up to 30 if you have it, you know. Yeah, the funny thing is about your iPod, because you rip so much meat, well, I have, and uh, things come on, and I'll go, hmm, who's that? Right, <laughs> it's like, right. you got to look it up, but well, then you need your picture. Yeah, you need the picture. <laughs> right, <laughs> need exactly. The picture, yeah. yeah. Or you need the album cover to yeah. flip it over, and like, 
Oh, okay. So, so. it's uh, I, I like it. So I, I I like technology, and I think if it's used right, it's great. But uh, you know, everyone's got their own opinion. That's cool. Now you got one more in you. Ooh, we can do another one. I you guess. got one more? Um, yeah, we didn't plan it. What can we do? What do we like to do? You got? Come on, throw me a song. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> Steve. <laughs> 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 He's just the intern today. <laughs> ah, jeez. Um, I can't even think. We've been driving for like 10 hours or something. So Come on, David. Do what do you want to do, Dave? They're playing the guitar. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it all goes back to Michael. So what are we doing, Michael? <laughs> you see what I mean? All right. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, um. Well, it, it, that's it's fine if you don't have if you if you if you don't no, want to do another one. Song. Yeah. I'm just trying to think right. what to do. Um, I know you've been on the road all night and all day or whatever, and trying to get to Cleveland to play Fat Fish today. <laughs> so I mean, it's yeah, um, it's we understandable. Can do one if I can just get one in my head right now acoustically that we do, uh, <laughs> we'll do it. Um, how about help me out, guys? See, we're, yeah. we're going down the list. We're all, we're all road lagged. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> road lagged. Yeah, oh, no, yes. no, come on, let's let's do something. We're all here now. Let's do it all together. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, um, work so hard. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Let's do that. There you go. Work so hard. There you go. See? Easy. Now you know why I don't ask them about music too much. See how right. long? It, see how long it takes them? <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Whenever you're ready, Michael. Two, one, two, three, four. Started out in my hometown Lived alone with no one around A single room with a single bed With one blanket, no pillow for my head I found a job with little pay I made some friends who lived the same way Nowhere to run when you need a friend No one there no one anywhere Work so hard, work so hard I don't know anymore I feel I don't exist Maybe I won't exist anymore My life has been one hell of a job From place to place like a homeless dog Made enough money to pay the rent a little more for loaf of bread. Take it, Brenda. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, I work so hard. Ooh, yeah. I work and I work. I work and I work. I work so hard. Maybe I won't exist anymore Started out in my hometown Lived alone with no one around A single room with a single bed With one blanket, no pillow for my head Found a job with little pay I made some friends who live the same way Nowhere to run when you need a friend No one there, no one anywhere Let's take it home Oh yeah, oh yeah I work so hard Yeah, Ooh, work so hard Okay Okay <laughs> <laughs> Now with this song here, is it one of your new ones or one of your old ones? Or uh, This is uh, one of the newer ones. Newer ones? Yeah. Okay. And uh, what did it take to put this one together? Uh, about um, 
10 minutes. 10 minutes, really? <laughs> how long does it usually take you for to write a song, though? I mean, from the start to finish, how long uh, does it really take? It depends the song. I don't think I've really taken more time than 15 minutes to write a song. Really? Because I won't sit down and say, well, I'm going to go to work now and write songs. Okay. I'll just write them when I feel there's one there, and usually it comes out really fast. But it takes. But it's probably a little longer aspect to put the physical music together for the harmony for the song and everything like that, the, the music itself, right? Well, the recording, you're talking right, about, yeah. Well, I'll yeah. usually write a song, this is it. You know, I get my okay. acoustic guitar out and I'll just right. jam on it a little bit. Or usually I'm, I'm just practicing, just warming up, keeping my fingers oiled and, just, right. oh, wow, that sounds good. And I'll um, write a song around that. But, yeah, taking it into the studio, well, then it's, it's you know, yeah, it's, it's many, hour, many hours of, of refining and saying, okay, let's let's work out a bass line and, a drum beat for this thing and possibly put some keys in there right. and how many harmonies, you know, it, right. you can go off the deep end. I have two more questions for you. Now, what was, like, one of your favorite songs of all time that you've done that really, like, wow, I put this thing together and I can't believe it? Um, I would have to say it's it's one of my older songs. It's a song called Without Your Love for Company. Okay. Um, I, I still remember going into the studio and again, it's one of those songs that took me probably three, four minutes to write. Right. Uh, went into the studio, and it just it just fell into place. The original demo of it just, and it's been one of my favorite songs ever since. It's just it, it, it gelled, and it was on my very first album. I thought the rest of the album sucked, but that song <laughs> was, that song was great. Yeah. You know. What about you, Brenda? What's, what's one of the favorite song? One of your favorite songs out of Michael Charles's. Uh album here um, out of any of his albums well I have more than one well your favorite one <laughs> uh, it's a song called um, Fooling Around okay yeah it's because I like the way I vibe with Michael on that particular song go ahead yell it out Steve what's your favorite one of his of his, of his. Um, uh, I have pick one pick one, one. all time favorite uh, probably you love playing Oh, my shadow. Yeah. My yeah. shadow. How about you? Well, we don't play it yet, but it'd be great to. Uh, Shots of Jack. Okay. Oh, really? See, that's a surprise. You, know, you didn't even know that, huh? No, I didn't know. He's, he's been bringing that up for a little bit I didn't lately. Know Shots of Jack. <laughs> that's one of my. That's one of my instrumentals because I'm not singing, right? <laughs> <laughs> Last, well, maybe he's trying to push you out, Michael. <laughs> Last question for you. Out of all your albums, all your CDs, and uh, everything that you accomplished and um, all the places you've been, you know, the the music community in, in Chicago, what is it like? Because you're from Chicago. What's it like in Chicago, the music scene there? You know, Chicago is, um, it, it's it's a hub. Okay. You can call it the hub, I guess. Um when I first came here 20 years ago uh, to the to the U.S. and uh, the, it's changed a lot. Right. The blues scene has changed. I mean, even blues music has evolved a lot, and it's 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 kind of changed. But you know, if you go downtown Chicago to the main clubs, you know, the Kingston Mines and Blues and Buddy Guys Legends, um, that there, there's an atmosphere in those clubs that I I think only Chicago has. Right. There's no. And I've been all over this country, and it's yeah. just, you know, and, and even in Australia, and there's something about downtown Chicago blues clubs that the rest of the country just hasn't got. I don't think they ever will. Don't you? Don't you think so, guys? You know, it's just, so you know, and it's just, it's just a great atmosphere. You know, whether it's summertime, whether right. it's winter time, um, it doesn't matter. It's just, a, it's just got this feeling there. It's like that here in Cleveland too. I mean, uh, there are certain the 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 rock and roll community here in Cleveland is they welcome anything you know anybody with open arms you know they have they have like different communities here they got the metal community they got the rock community they got the blues community you know they got the hip hop community and so on and so forth and you know you got all these different genres of music and in the music scene here in Cleveland it's I don't know dude it's 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 like a dying breed right now I mean uh, not a lot of people are going out and actually physically watching a show 
They don't want to get out there and, and, and or they'll go and watch a show. And the thing that makes me mad so much is that if you're going to go to a show, stay for the whole thing. I mean, you might see something or another band or another group or a person or an individual that you may like and that might be in your iPod. Yeah. Um, it, it, I, I find it strange because Cleveland's right. got the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Right. If people come from all over the world right. and you'd think that would put it, set a mood Right. Send them. Let's go and see a live act. And well, I think what I think what set Cleveland over the edge it was is that they have all the inductees and all the uh, parties in, in New York, and all we have is a physical building here in Cleveland. So who cares? That's kind of we strange. want we want the we want everything. If we're gonna have the Rock and Roll uh, Hall it should of Fame be here, here it should everything be should be here. Yeah, I'll think everything. So. You know. So if we're gonna induct somebody, then that person should be here in Cleveland. We had one induction party here. That was it. Why so, do you think that is? I have no idea. I have no idea. That's strange. I still can't figure it out to my, to myself. <laughs> but uh, that's why I want to go to London. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> other than that, though, uh, Michael, it's been great having you here. Always and, a pleasure. And, and I always I enjoy when you come up to Cleveland and hang out with us. Uh, he's going to be at Fat, Fat Fish Blue tonight, tonight at 8 o'clock. Doors open up at 7. All the information is on our website at morningshowcentral.com. I do appreciate you coming in. Brenda, it's nice seeing you again. Thank you very much. You too, man. I, 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 I enjoy your company. And Steve, the intern, thank you for uh, manning the camera over there, man. <laughs> um, check out Michael at his website, michaelcharles.com. And uh, you have uh, any more uh, new CDs or any no, it's new music actually coming michaelcharles.us. Dot .us. Mm -hmm. Okay. You should get web and dot .com. Uh, never had dot com. I thought you had, never. I, it was always dot us. You should buy dot com. No, I've always thought the us was a kind of a cool twist. You should have them all so that we can afford <laughs> them all. To it. All right, all right. And um, we're actually we're actually doing uh, an acoustic show tomorrow at uh, Fat Fish as well. All right, okay, yeah, cool. In the afternoon, cool. All right, Michael, I do appreciate you coming in, man. You got Thank it, you, my man. Brother. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys.